Praise God for that exhortation to build the church. <clears throat> My favorite symbol of zeal to build the church in the Bible is Noah when he built the ark. 120 years of hard labor and sacrifice and everyone called him crazy. But uh, when the flood came, they saw that they were the crazy ones. Um, Noah was saved and I'd be crazy not to build God's uh, ship right now. The the church is God's boat that's going to last when Jesus returns, when the flood comes. Um, and I'd be uh, a fool not to labor to build God's ship, the only ship that'll remain standing. <clears throat> so thanks for sharing that. Uh, Jeremy, I'm... Uh, what I wanted to share was related to what Sandeep shared last week with regard to the running the race. We heard that it's a this the Christian life is a race and it's a, a marathon. Marathon is a really really long race. It's over twenty six miles, uh, twenty six miles um, run, and uh, it's not just a marathon, but it's a group marathon. We're running it together. So I had a couple of thoughts on there to share. Uh, if we could open up to Hebrews twelve. And we'll read the first three verses. <clears throat> Therefore, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance. So it's saying run with endurance, because it's a long, uh, a long and arduous race. Run with endurance the race that is set before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. So he, just because it was long and arduous doesn't mean that it wasn't joyful. It's not a joyful, uh, it doesn't mean it's not a joyful race. The joy set before me endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then this is a verse that uh, I wanted to focus on today. For consider him who has endured the such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. To me, this tells me the key to enduring, and that's by considering Jesus' life. Consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The key to endurance is to, to look at how Jesus lived. That's what I'm reading here in verse 3. Look at how Jesus endured. Uh, who was the first one to run this race? It wasn't Paul who wrote these words, or he didn't write these words, but he wrote in Corinthians, run the race. It wasn't Paul, it wasn't the writer of Hebrews who um, said uh, run the race, or who ran the race first. Jesus was the first one to run the race. And so, <clears throat> as I was meditating on how Jesus ran his race and endured, I wrote down five points of how I see Jesus endured in his race. The first one is that Jesus endured without getting discouraged. Enduring means we get through, we endure easy days and hard days. Um, I think that Jesus, he, uh, is, a lot of people I think uh, probably just assume that since Jesus was God, he didn't, um, he knew everything. He wasn't like us. He must have known everything. He known he must have known when the cross was coming and he must have known exactly what it was going to entail. But I don't believe that I believe that um, Jesus was led by the Spirit, and just like us, he didn't know the future because he had give, given up his rights when he came to earth, and he lived uh, with the same temptations that we have. There's a lot less temptations if you know the future, but if you don't know the future, there's more temptation so, uh, to discouragement and despair. So I don't believe Jesus knew when the cross was coming, but he waited, and then one day God said, okay, it's time, and uh, his father said, it's time, and Jesus said, okay, Father, uh, and he endured. Um, he endured this life, uh, knowing that at any moment God could say it's time. Um, and then at age 33, it was time and he did it. I'm going to endure like Jesus did. And I have to see what joy he had to run his race and how he pressed through. Um, <clears throat> number two was Jesus endured with faith and patience. I, uh, recently I was going through a, a struggle and, uh, it was lasting for a while, and I prayed to God a lot about it, and I felt him lay two words on my heart for this. One was faith, and two, the second was patience. The first is faith. Be optimistic. Don't get discouraged. Uh, 
look at God's consolations, look at what God has given, despite, even if this problem lasts the rest of my life, despite what um, the difficulty. There's a verse I really like in Psalm 94, 19. It says, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. Psalm 94, 19. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. The consolations of God delight my soul whenever any anxious thought starts to come up. The, this race is hard, but the difficulty of it compare, pales in comparison to the glory that he's promised to his consolations. Jesus fed on God's consolations. He, this is what he lived on. He lived on God's promises and for the joy that was set before him. He never complained. And then also, along with faith, being full of faith, he was patient. He knew that it wasn't God's will to, um, to uh, have all of the answers right away. He was content um, not knowing. I think one of the greatest lessons that we can learn in our life with God is to be content with his timing. To be content not only with his the timing of what he chooses, but also to not know when the timing is. Um, I feel that that's one of the most valuable lessons um, that I can take from God. To be patient and patiently endure, uh, being content with his timing. The third... Uh, thing I noticed about Jesus enduring his race was that he endured with the fear of the Lord. Jesus was tempted to sin more than anyone else on earth. How do we know that? Uh, because who will, would Satan want to get to fall most out of all the people that have ever lived? He can get us to fall, but the blood of Jesus covers it. But if he could get Jesus to fall, um, you can be sure Satan and all of the Evil powers tried more than anything to get Jesus to sin his whole life. Um, but Jesus feared the Lord. And so he endured in a fear of the Lord. He denied his will every day, constantly, to every temptation that uh, the devil always came back to him with. And he endured. <clears throat> his whole life was that picture of endurance and not wanting to sin even once. Not wanting to give in. If he would have given in to his will even one time, the world, we would have been hopeless. The whole world would have been hopeless. And his life is this picture of, Father, keep me from sin. Uh, you get a picture of that in Hebrews 5, chapter, se chapter 5, verse 7. In the, that was, this is a picture of Jesus' life, what all his days on earth look like. It says, In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his piety. To save Jesus from death, it meant keeping him from sinning even once, because Hebrew, uh, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. So, to me, it says, Jesus cried, for God to keep him from sin because he knew the wages of sin is death. He was crying for this deliverance from death. He didn't want to be separated from his father even once. And he knew that if he sinned even once, even one time, given even just a thought, even one little thought of, uh, of gratification, not even outward, nobody else would have seen it. But even if he would have given one time to a thought, all, everything would have been over. And uh, Jesus endured in his fear of the Lord. <clears throat> So that's what I want my life to look like, to say, Lord, I don't want to sin against you even once today. Uh, I think that's a good prayer to pray. Lord, help me to live today without sinning. And if I, if I do sin, to see it, to notice it, and to confess and repent of it quickly and keep pressing on. Help me to endure in the fear of the Lord. Then the fourth point was that Jesus endured with self-restraint. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. So it's saying, if we're taking this race seriously, then we're going to exercise self-control. Uh, it then goes on to say, they then do it to receive an, a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. 1 Corinthians 9.25. The people who want to compete seriously exercise self-control. There are many things that God's given us the freedom to do in this life, uh, but there's a type of runner with an attitude that'll never get gold. Uh, I want to win the race, but I still just want to eat whatever I want. I want to do whatever I want with my free time. Uh, I don't feel like going to practice today. Um, there's a, a certain type of uh, self-control that 
I need to get a hold of that exercise of self-restraint. I used to think that Christian discipline meant setting alarms on my phone so that I can do something at a certain time. But now I see <laughs> Christian discipline is not about schedule, it's about self-restraint. That's what discipline means is uh, saying, yeah, I can, I can eat this food, but I choose not to because it's better uh, for me. Uh, this donut looks really good, but it's not that um, we can never have the freedom, but it's that we have control. We have self-control. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. We have a self-control to say, this is not going to be profitable. This is not. This is going to be detrimental to my spiritual life. Let me hold back. Let me withhold back a little bit. Uh, Jesus, he enjoyed life, but he never overindulged. He drank wine, but he wasn't a drunk. Jesus ate good food, but he wasn't a glutton. And he often fasted. Uh, Jesus slept, but he wasn't a sluggard. He often woke up early and stayed up late to have time alone with his father. So Jesus, he was competing in the games and he had perfect self-restraint. And he ran the race uh, hard and willing to, if he said, this is going to make me faster, he's like, I'll give it up easily. Um, so if I want to run the race, race uh, then I'll be like that and have a very easily breakable will. Uh, say, if this is going to be a hindrance to me, okay. Fine, done, out. I'm not going to I'm not gonna um, mess with that if that's going to ruin my spiritual life or hold me back at all. <clears throat> and then the last thing, the last point was Jesus endured his race with joy. Going back to that verse, Hebrews 12, 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. I one, once heard somebody say, nothing can be done for an extended period of time if it's not done with joy. It can't be done well. You can do something for an extended period of time, but you can't do it well if it's not with joy. And I believe that's right. Um, last week we heard that the marathon race that we're enduring is to stay purely devoted to the Lord, in love for the Lord, to, that we have a, a passion, a pure heart, such a love for God, that that's what we endure and that's what we want to keep every single day. That's what we want to run hard in. And it was this love for G for the Father that Jesus endured the joy. He said, look what I'm going to have. I'm going to have the Father and I'm going to have a bride at the end of this. Uh, this is what the joy that was set before Jesus, I believe. Uh, I believe a great picture of that in the Bible is when Jacob worked for seven years to marry the love of his life. He had to, back then, um, he, there was no dating. There was no asking. Uh, why don't you marry me? There was, I guess, I don't know, understand the way it worked, but he had to ask the father, can I have your daughter? And he said, sure, but pay me in labor. So he had to la work for seven years. And it says in Genesis 29, 20, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed to him but a few days because of his, because of his love for her. Jacob had so much joy over the fact that he would gain Rachel that his labor became so small and easy. He was able to easily endure in that um, seven years of tedious labor because of the love he had uh, and the goal he had. He said, I'm gaining Rachel at the end of this. And so that's how Jesus endured. He said, I, I'm going to have eternity with my father and with my bride, which is the church. Um, let me focus on that, not on the pain of my cross. This is the joy. When I love the Lord so much uh, like that, then my toil here will be light, and it'll seem this life will seem like just a few days. Uh, like Paul said, I count all things to be lost in view of surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. Everything's nothing, because I want Jesus. Um, We've recently heard that uh, the saying that I've really loved, Jesus is my hero. So he's my hero too, and he's the example that I want to study and, study, and we heard to be absorbed in these things. I want to absorb my heart in Jesus' life so I can live like he did.